Okay, I think oh, this might oh, be we Jim got another call He may have found sign. Jim. Let's see. If we he... have another call in. Hello? Hello, who is this? Hi, this is Ezra from the Funny Poppet Show. Who is this? Ezra, hi, this is Jim Martin. Um, I got a call from Gary Gnu, and he said that I should call you right away. What's happening, Ezra? Not a whole <laughs> lot, a little bit. We had uh, Gary just called in, and uh, we were talking to him, and he was saying how lonely he was because Griddle and... Uh, Baxter and all the kids, they haven't been up visiting him lately. The coaster has not made a pass out there. Yeah, I, 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 uh, this has been a very, very big problem. Be, be, before I go any further, Ezra, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to, uh, to all the mothers on the Poppet Show. Oh, we got a lot of mothers, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there are no mothers I, in I, studio, but there are lots watching. So, and they're listening yes, to us. And there's, a, there's a lot of wannabe mothers, too. Yes. But that everyone, this is Jim we're, Martin. We're trying to make as many as we can, yeah. my friend. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this everyone, this is Jim Martin. He is a friend of the Popette Show and friend of a lot of people in channel, and a good friend of Gary Gnu. Is that correct? Yes, I. You know, I haven't seen Gary for quite a long time. It's been like 1987, 89, something like that. Was the last time I saw him. Wow. But I, but I heard that he was trying to get the space elevator working to come to Anthracon. I hope he can. That would be awesome. The budget well, what, behind what that. What is this space elevator thing? Uh, it, it's some wacky invention that, that, that someone has come up with. Well, that's a good thing because from what I understand, Anthracon needs elevators, so this might be a good thing. It could be. <laughs> ah, Okay, but, uh, that's good. Yeah, but uh, so one of the things we talked about a little earlier, maybe we can bring you up to speed on what we know so far, is uh, oh, you spear okay, Ezra. you've spearheaded a campaign to help preserve the Great Space Coaster. Can you tell everybody a little bit about that? Yeah, what, what is going on is um, the Toonseum, which is a cartoon art museum in Pittsburgh, which celebrates all kinds of cartooning from comic books, to anthropomorphic characters, to mm -hmm. editorial cartooning, to motion pictures. Um, Crystal, my wife, and I are on the board of the Toonsian, and we go to comic cons and, and different shows and trying to promote Pittsburgh to tourism, and, uh, tourism rather to Pittsburgh, and the Toonsian. Mm -hmm. And uh, people know that I've been involved with the Great Space Coaster and know that I'm a close personal friend of Gary. So God only knows where he is uh -huh. 30 years ago. And um, they, they keep asking me, when are they going to release the tapes? Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this for about a year and a half, asking the question, who is they? Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe Wos, who is our executive director of the Toonsium, he uh, started an Internet search to find out uh, who actually owned the rights to the Great Space Coaster. Okay. So for about a year and a half now, we've been searching around the world trying to find out, and we, we've come to find out earlier in the year that a company called TD Loonland uh, had the rights to the Great Space Coaster. Mm -hmm. Do I have time to tell you all of this? Go sure. for it, sure. Yeah. we got four sure. hours and to then, kill. And then we kind of have a little news for you. So go ahead and tell okay. us what's up. Okay, so, so real, real quickly, what happened was the Great Space Coaster was made by a company called Sunbow Productions. Mm -hmm. And back in the 80s, they did all of these great cartoons like Transformer, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, um, Gem, all kinds of great Hasbro product cartoons. Well, when, when the people that owned Sunbow retired, they sold their whole um, library to Sony. Sony then sold it to a, a subdivision of their company called Sony Wonder, and then Sony Wonder went out of business and sold it to a company in Germany mm -hmm. called TV Loonland, right. where, where it sat for many, many years. And then uh, a few years back from, from what I've been told, when Hasbro started to think about making live-action movies of their cartoon series like Transformers and G.I. Joe, mm -hmm. uh, they went to TV Loonland and bought back all of their cartoon property. Okay. So in the business, you know, they're, they're uh, releasing through the Shouts Factory, uh, they're releasing all of the cartoons and that to kind of get interest for their, for their movies uh, before they release them. Mm-hmm. 
And we went through this whole search and found out that TV Moonland owned the Great Space Coaster, and we negotiated with them, and we we bought the show. Okay. So we we own all of the the rights to the show. The big problem that we then that we then had created for ourselves was that the show was in California. Tapes were in New York. Tapes were in New Jersey. They were in Germany. They were in the Netherlands. So then we had to go on this search to gather up. So my wife and I are renting trucks, and we're driving to New York, and we're driving to Jersey, um, dodging bullets, getting the tapes, coming back to Pittsburgh, and storing them. Uh-huh. Well, when we when we looked at these tapes, unfortunately, we have no logs for the tapes. There's nothing but a date and a number. So it says Great Space Coaster 29, and then the date and the year. Uh-huh. Kind of we sounds like no our idea. show archives. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no archiving at all. And um, in order to to do this, we have to play the tapes. And we've gone to a couple of companies that do this archival media, and there's a company outside of Pittsburgh in Cranberry, PA, and they've looked at the tapes for us, um, just physically looked at the tapes, and they said they're starting to delaminate, uh, which means that the actual backing is separating from the uh, the magnetic part of the tape. Okay. These tapes were done in the 80s on a format that was called 2-inch quad. Mm-hmm. So the tapes are 2 inches wide and they're bigger than a than a dinner plate. They're really huge tapes okay. and they're very they're very heavy. And they cost quite a bit of money to uh, to play. Okay. And some of them, in fact, they have to do what they call bake them. They literally put them in a special oven mm-hmm. and bake them to try to pull the, the the uh, backing together with with the uh, magnetic part of the tape, uh-huh. and they only get like one play out of this. So we're trying to raise money so that we can take these tapes. There's 250 half hours of the Great Space Coaster, mm-hmm. and we're trying to get them put onto digital media, onto a hard drive, before these tapes deteriorate. And as some of you probably remember, the Great Space Coaster not only contained puppets and the kids, but there was music, there was international animation. Mm-hmm. As you talked about La Linea before, um, there was a lot of independent uh, America as well as foreign animation. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of iconic guest stars from the 80s like Mean Joe Green mm-hmm. and Linda Gray and Kathleen Turner I and remember that Armstrong. Yeah. Mark Campbell was on the show. We've been trying to get a hold of Mark to see if he would help us you know, save these shows. So well, what we're trying to do is we raised enough money to save four of the shows, so we've digitized four of the shows, mm-hmm. and they look really good. Mm-hmm. The quality looks good. We only have one problem, which is a really dis- disappointing, depressing problem about this whole show, uh-huh. is going back to when are they ever going to release the show on on uh, DVD. Oh, good one. And to, t- and to tell you the truth is the, the shows will probably as Gary would say, can never be released on DVD. Oh, no. And the, re- and the reason for that is um, the show contains so much music that to renew all those licensing fees, WKRP in Cincinnati, when they released that show on DVD, mm-hmm. we've learned that they had the same problems. But because that music was just background in the radio station, they could replace it. Mm-hmm. But because our show had people singing these songs, we, we cannot keep the show intact um, with, with this music because the licensing fees would become so expensive that nobody would ever want to pay what these DVDs were, would, would cost to save. I, I remember one of my so, favorite songs the kids did was Yellow Orange. I don't know if you remember that one. Yes, yes, today is a yellow orange day, mm-hmm. right. Now, when um, back in the so, day, when, when uh, these licensing fees, uh, has the copyright rules have changed quite a bit, I imagine, since then, right? Or is it well, about the same? The, the rules have changed, but, you know, because the show was done all union, the writers were would need to be paid, the performers would need to be paid, the director, the composers, you know, all these people would need to get residual payments off of it, and... Honestly, I don't think the show would generate that much of an income mm-hmm. to to warrant being able to release on DVD. What we're hoping to do is, once we have all the shows digitized, we can then donate the tapes to television uh, and radio museums around the world, around the United States. Mm-hmm. 
We can donate it to the Chicago Museum, the New York Museum, the L.A. Museum. We can even, we're even going to donate it to the Toonsium mm -hmm. so people can then come to the viewing room and view the shows and watch them. So they won't be lost forever. They will just not be able to be commercially viewed. Right. We now, can't even put them on the Internet. Um, it's, it's crazy. The, the logistics are – we have two lawyers that have been working very cheaply for us and, you know, trying to – help us get this done and there's there's just no way right well the, the cost i was gonna say uh jim we have a, a little bit of bad news for you okay you have to build a puppet if you know what the what, perks, what do you mean do you know what the perks are on the website yes um you know that on the 500 hundred dollar donation level you have to build someone a one-of-a-kind puppet you really, have, we've hit that high. Uh, currently, you are at fifty percent of your goal. Uh, yep. you are at one thousand dollars right now. Oh, yeah. guys, that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, <laughs> mo but much of that just came in within the last hour. Yep. Um, was there a five hundred dollar donation? There was a five hundred dollar donation. Oh boy, who was that? Uh, it is anonymous. It's it's available to Jim. Jim will be able to see it. Oh, so you can make an ambiguous puppet. You, you, well, it's. <laughs> but uh, we want to say we wanted to let you say a personal thank you to a few people that did leave their names. Uh, okay, that's terrific. The, the following individuals have made donations. Uh, Cosmic, Romeo, Garrison, Dragonhead, Wolfcat, Dwell, and the others are anonymous. The larger dollar amounts are anonymous. That's actually their name. Those are their Well, those are their online nicknames. They're actually watching in our chat channel Mr. right now. Mr. Anonymous. But all of those Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you all so much. What we're... What we're also, just to tell you what we're, we're, we're working on is we've caught, I can't tell Gary this because he's going to be very upset because he doesn't realize that he is a puppet. It's okay. He doesn't but, watch um, the show. He hates it. So go on. We, we contacted the original guys that built the puppets for the Great Space Coaster, mm -hmm. John Orberg and Jim Krupa, and Gary is now being rebuilt. That's amazing. And we're, ho we're hoping that Gary will make it to AnthroCon Though this is the first time we've said anything about this, so this is we're hoping that AnthroCon welcomes Gary with open arms. I'm sure and that they Gary will. can do something really uh, crazy at AnthroCon. He can park the coaster on the roof. I'm sorry. He can park the coaster on the roof of the hotel. Yeah, so he's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the donations are still coming in, Jim. So they're they're not stopping. Just they're they're coming in sporadically as people are uh, able to. Now there is. At least one donation I know that's coming in from a, a viewer of ours in Austria. He's he's at work and his job site does not allow him to go to PayPal, uh, which is how he's going to make the donation. So you have more money coming. Um, but Atkilar, who is a big puppeteering fan, uh, was saying he really likes the show. He met you at Euroference, and he wants. Euroference was wonderful. Yeah, and he wants to show his support, so he's going to be donating some money as well. And uh, hopefully we'll get you closer to that $2,000 goal. It, it, the goal ends next Sunday, correct? That's correct. Okay, so we're, we're spreading the word through our viewers and through our friends. We're also, all the cast here is tweeting and talking to people about it, so we're trying to spread the word, see if we can get you a little money. And we keep telling people, you know, if everybody just drops $5, it's like, it's like losing a Starbucks cup of coffee. You know, just give up one That's cup true. of coffee, sa help, help save this, uh, this really fun show. And uh, we're going to see if we can help you out with that. Thank you so much. What, just to give you an idea of what else we're, we're kind of working on with the Great Space Coaster, once Gary is in our possession, we're hoping that Gary can launch on the Internet his own show. And something that the, the audience never saw, they only heard, was Gary's offstage crew. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a chance to meet some of the wacky characters that populate Gary's no Ganoush show, and also we're working on a comic book, and I don't think we're going to have it done in time for Anthrocon, but sort of a story that kind of fills in the gaps from when uh, you stopped watching the show back in the 80s to current day, and uh, what happened to the coaster, where's Baxter, where's Gorilla? what happened to the kids, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of filling that in. And we're writing it in such a way that even if people have never heard of the Great Space Coaster, we are hoping they'll find it funny and humorous and uh, that they'll want to watch the Gary Gnu show on the Internet, no matter what form it takes. 